Good afternoon, my name is Daniel Schrader and in this video I'm going to show you how to copy a local file system tree to a remote host in Linux without using rsync. This is useful if you're working on Unix servers like AIX where rsync probably isn't installed. I use this uh, method to migrate Apache websites um, between from one Linux server to another Linux server and rsync was not installed. So I could have installed rsync but I performed the operation this way instead. Now I'm logged into my Linux server right now and I'm going to verify the host name is Schrader-Server1. This is our local host. Today's date is Saturday, April 22nd, 2017. The way we're going to copy this file system tree to the remote host is by using tar and ssh. So we're going to start with the tar command. Tar means tape archiver and historically it's used for file system backups. We're going to pass it the C option which means uh, create a tar file. P which means preserve file permissions and ownerships. F which means file follows and a dash. What that dash means is that the tar file will not be written to disk but will be written to memory and passed through an anonymous pipe to our SSH command. The next argument is the files that we're reading in, which will be all files and directory files underneath the slash USR directory. We're then going to pipe that uh, tar file to SSH and our remote host is Saturn. After we SSH to Saturn, we're going to execute a CD command to slash root slash TMP and then if that CD command succeeds then we're going to execute another tar command passing it the X option for extract V for verbose so it will show us all of the files that are being written to Saturn's file system P which means preserve file permissions and ownerships and F for the tar file follows. And we're going to pass it a dash argument which means that the tar file will not come from disk but will come from memory. So what we have in this command line is a reading tar, SSH, and a writing tar. <clears throat> so this tar command reads all of the directories and files underneath slash USR into a tar file and it passes that tar file through an anonymous pipe to SSH. SSH logs into Saturn, our remote host, changes the shell's working directory to slash root slash TMP and if that is successful then a writing tar is executed and extracts all of the files from the tar file passed to it through the anonymous pipe. Let's execute this command. Now tar is telling us that it's going to remove the leading slashes from member names. That's good. What that means is that all of the files that will exist in the tar file will have relative path names. <clears throat> For our uses here, that's fine. It's not going to cause us a problem. Now sad is prompting us for a password, roots password, so I'm going to enter that in now. Now what we're seeing are all of the files and directories underneath slash USR being written to our remote host Saturn's local file system. Okay, now 
it's time to verify that all of the files and directories from Schrader-Server1 successfully copied to our remote host Saturn. <clears throat> the easiest way that I know of to do this is to use the du command, which stands for disk used, and it summarizes the amount of disk space that every file and directory is consuming underneath the slash USR directory. So we see that 1.1 gigabytes of disk space is being consumed by all files and directories underneath slash USR. Now let's check the amount of disk space being used uh, by uh, all directories and files in uh, our destination uh, file system on Saturn. We're going to use ssh saturn du dash sh slash root slash tmp slash usr. SSH is prompting us for the password. Enter that in. 1.1 gigabytes of disk space is being consumed by all files and directories underneath slash root slash tmp slash usr on Saturn. As you can see, they match, so more than likely, all of the files and directories copied over successfully. No problems. Now you might ask, well, you didn't use rsync, but why not use the secure copy program, SCP? The reason is, is that SCP does not copy file ownerships. It does not preserve file ownerships. It preserves file permissions, but not file ownerships. I'll confirm for you that file ownerships have been preserved using this tar and SSH method. I'll execute an ls space dash l on slash usr slash bin slash at and we see that the file's owner is daemon and its group owner is daemon. Now on Saturn I'll execute the same command in the path where that file is. And you'll see that the destination file also has the same owner and group, daemon and daemon. Now the reason why it was important to use the preserve permission options to the tar commands is because root executed those commands. So if those options weren't used, it's likely that root would write all of the files using its ownership of the files. So instead of daemon daemon owning at, uh, root root would own at. 